day 31, goodbye January. Can you believe it? And now we're getting ready to jump into February. Um, and we're also going to jump into the Word of God today. Now, a few of the scriptures you're going to hear me say, you're going to think, I, I remember that. I've heard that. You have. But I'm going to go a little different direction maybe than what you're expecting. But today, the first scripture, we're going to talk about faith in suitcases. And faith uh, in chapter Hebrews 11, verse 6 says this. Uh, but he that, but without faith, it is impossible to believe God. He that be, he that cometh to God must believe he is and is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. He said two things there. You need to mark them down in your Bible. The first thing it says is you have to believe that he is. That does not mean that you just say, yeah, I know there's a God. I, yeah, I believe there's a God. No, this is talking about relationship. And because even the demons, the Bible says in James 2.19, you believe there's one God, good. Even the demons believe in God and shudder. And so it, it's talking about a relationship with him. And the second thing it says is that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. And that's what you're doing when you chase after God. Now, um, faith is a gift from God. And the Bible tells us in Romans 12, 3, God has given to every man a measure of faith. We all have that. And if you're a child of God, you have faith inside you. It's ready to be activated. And, and you, couldn't, you couldn't even have believed for God for salvation if you hadn't had a measure of faith. That's why God put faith inside of you. Now, there's something we need to know about faith. Faith can be increased. There's a, a verse that we've used before, and it's Psalms 139, and it's verse 14, and it said, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made, and that I know well. And then it says, marvelous are your works. And the Bible says, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. God made every bit of our bodies. I mean, from the muscles to the tendons to the nerves, nerve endings, he did it all, and he, he expected us, as we mature, our bodies mature, for our muscles to continue to grow stronger and stronger. But the thing about muscles, you will develop your muscles according to what you need them for. So if you're going to be a weightlifter, obviously you're going to be in the gym every day, pumping iron, getting those muscles in streamlined condition. But if you're a librarian unless you're carrying a whole lot of heavy books, you don't need the same strength that a weightlifter needs. Um, you know, in the flower shop, we didn't need the same strength that they needed to bale hay. It, it's just whatever level you're at, you will build your muscles according to what you need them for. And and I was thinking about, um, you remember the story of... Um, the story of the servants in Matthew 25, 14, 15, and it says, again, the kingdom of God can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. He called together his servants and he entrusted money to them while he was gone. He gave five bags of silver to one, two bags of silver to another, and one bag of silver to the last. And get this, he divided it in proportion to their abilities and then he left on a trip. First let me explain something that I preached a while back. It's been quite a while back but when God created you he packed your suitcase for you. No joke. Every day he has in your suitcase what you will need for every assignment, every problem, every opportunity, everything you need. And, and that just is amazing to me how he's done that but that's the way God operates. And now you need to know that he's packed your bag, but everybody else wants to pack it for you too. We have family members, you know, they, they want to tell you what you should and shouldn't do, how you should raise your kids, what you should wear. They should, they tell you that uh, where you should go to school, who you should marry. I mean, people always have opinions is what I'm telling you. Everybody has an opinion. What they're trying to do is pack your suitcase for you. And you're like, I don't want to do those things. Well, um, another thing is grown children. They want to decide where you live. 
whether you can drive or not. I'm just telling you, kids, you better watch it because I can be really tough if I have to be. And and they want to decide certain things for you, which doctor to go to, things that you may not want them to deal with, but that's just part of life. Another thing is, your you know, family members, they kind of want you to fit in the mold that they have preconceived for you. They're all trying to pack your bag. Now, what we need to know is we can't pack our bag either. Oh, we try. You know what we do? We think of all the things that could make us successful in life. Maybe you went and got a college education. Maybe you got a really great job. Maybe you picked a, a beautiful house to live in and you got a nice car and all these things because you believe that's going to help you. What you're doing is putting tools in your toolbox so that you can fix anything that comes up in life, but you can't. Then the next thing is the media. They want to pack your bag. They tell you with toothpaste will make you have a, have a dazzling smile so you can get anybody you want. They tell you what car to drive. Do you know they describe cars as sexy? Now I'm thinking, I don't look at a car and say, boy, that's a sexy car. I don't think that's ever come out my mouth. We look at the things the media is pushing towards us. You eat things that they tell you to eat. You may not know it, but you do. And so... The media is powerful, but Jesus Christ is the only one that knows exactly what you need, exactly what you need. And so he's packed things up for you so that wherever you go, you're ready. You've got everything you need. Now, there's a verse in Isaiah 46, 10, and it says, only I can tell you the future before it even happens. Everything I plan will come to pass, for I do whatever I wish. No use to go on to a psychic because he says, I'm the only one that knows your future. How did God, God pack your bag? He put everything in it, everything, according to what you would need it for. What somebody else is going to need it for, Billy Franklin Graham's going to need it for a whole lot more than what I need it for. So he packs our bags differently. But it should take the weight off our shoulders to know that God's done this. And do you know, if you ever stay at a really expensive hotel, you're going to find out they treat you like a million dollars. They may have event tickets for you. They have things like a, a bat, blessings of, of uh, baskets of goodies, drinks, flowers, all kinds of stuff. Anything you could even imagine that you would have forgotten, they got it for you. Well, this is like our God. He's got what we need before we walk into it. And there's another reason why we, should, we shouldn't we should worry about what we say to people when we run into them. Why? Because he put that in there too. He's got that in your bag. Everything you need. You will never, ever wake up with an empty bag. Your God has you prepared for today. I can't wait to see what you do. I can't wait to see who you run into or what you say or, or, or what God's planned for you. So hang on. And just know that your God is on the throne and he's packing your bag, probably even while we're talking. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this beautiful day. Lord, for every person who stayed faithful to this ministry, I thank you for that. And I pray, God, blessings on them. Just bless their socks off, Lord. And I pray, Father, that they will be all you created them to be. And Lord, help us to let you pack our bag and, and take our hands off of it and have everybody else take their hands off of it. Amen. In Jesus' name, we ask these things. Amen and amen. God bless. I will see you tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow, February 1st.